In the following dramatization, notice how a family benefits from the Apostle Paul's example of displaying love of neighbor even when provoked. What are you going to do? You're just a coward. Man, all you do is stand next to your little Man, You car. don't do anything. You're you just, just stand next to your little car. while just the rest a coward. of you stand up for your right. Just a coward. Gabe, what happened today? It's just I've been yelled at in service before, but this time I wanted to, I don't know. I wanted to go up to the girls and smash their phones. I'm so glad that you didn't. Yeah, but I feel guilty because I was like, I was like so angry. It's okay. Let's keep reading. We had left off in verse 26. Suddenly, a great earthquake occurred so that the foundations of the jail were shaken. Moreover, all the doors were instantly open and everyone's bonds came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, assuming that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out with a loud voice, do not hurt yourself for we are all here. So he asked for lights and rushed in. And seized with trembling, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Now, think about what the jailer had done to Paul. He could have hated him for it. Yeah, he could have. But... I guess he saw the jailer's pain instead of just his own. Yeah, Paul loved his neighbor. He didn't hold back trying to save his life. Hey, how do you get the nerve to keep coming out here? Look, you were right about what you said. No one should stand around while other people suffer injustice. So do something, fight like we do. This is my way of making a difference. The only way that I know the world can really change. Come on, man, the Bible? Like, I get what you're thinking, but let me show you just one scripture. All right, one scripture. So this is a verse in the Bible that convinced me of how I can make a difference. It's in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Here it says, And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Yes, then the end will come. And let's not focus too much on what the end really is or what we're supposed to look forward to. The global carnage of everybody who isn't one of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's how Gabe feels he is making a difference. And again, this is not to condone the fictional behavior this is all clearly a dramatization but this is not to condone the very aggressive confrontational behavior that we've seen depicted both in this part of the dramatization and the clip we were discussing previously it's never ever helpful to antagonize cult followers when they're trying to recruit there are better ways of doing it. You can engage in what's called street epistemology. You can use questions to have a productive dialogue that will sow some seeds so that someone like Gabe can go away and think through their beliefs from a different angle, from a different perspective. It's just never helpful or necessary to wind up Jehovah's Witnesses in this situation. That said, 
Is this a realistic depiction of how a Jehovah's Witness might win over someone who is being aggressive to them while they're doing the car witnessing? I would suggest no. <laughs> I would suggest if you have someone like this who just wants to argue and just wants to feel superior regarding those around him or people he encounters when he's out with his friends walking up to people who he knows will have completely different views to him, clearly just to start a fight, clearly just to cause trouble. There are people like that, of course, and this seems to be the sort of person who's being depicted here. You're never just going to be able to convince them to do a total U-turn and indulge you in reading a scripture. Can I just read you one scripture? Oh, Yes, of course, but make it just the one scripture. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? And I think the reason why Jehovah's Witnesses are being given such an unrealistic portrayal of cart witnessing is frankly to just convince them to press on with it. Because let's face it, it's a tough gig, isn't it? standing next to one of those carts. Fortunately, it's something I never had to do because I woke up from the Jehovah's Witness religion just before they introduced cart witnessing. But in my opinion, it's a bit of a misstep by the organisation to put Jehovah's Witnesses in the line of fire in this way. Because with door-to-door -door preaching, you are knocking on the door of an unsuspecting member of the public at a random time that they can't predict, making it harder for you to be targeted. Whereas when you're standing in a fixed place and people know you're going to be there because you're following a schedule and there's always going to be a cart at a particular location on a particular day, what you're creating is a target so that people like this individual can walk up and be confrontational. And in my opinion, the whole point of this dramatization is, apart from suggesting that there's always a Bible verse and there's always a way through that involves being a better Jehovah's Witness, the underlying message is that Jehovah's Witnesses should persist in the cart witnessing, even if it makes them vulnerable to persecution or having their beliefs challenged.